Today we'll be reviewing Tony Shea's Delivering Happiness. Tony is the CEO of Zappos and in many ways is seen as the anti-Bezos. Adam, what did you think? So they're certainly different in that they have completely different personalities. Uh, but the two are actually quite similar in terms of their entrepreneurial spirit. So at the beginning of this book, we hear a lot about Tony's childhood. He comes from a strict, uh, stereotypical Asian family where he's expected to practice an instrument for hours on end, uh, get great SAT scores, and go to a top school. Um, but Tony isn't particularly interested in doing all of this. Instead, he wants to start companies. Um, so he does things like found a mail order business that sells stuff to kids in the neighborhood. When he does go to college, he runs a pizza place. And then finally, as an adult, he quickly stops working at Oracle and founds Link Exchange, which was kind of one of the early online ads businesses. Uh, Tony is able to sell this to Microsoft for over $200 million. Um, and after a bit of a gap, he eventually gets involved with running Zappos, uh, which kind of comprises the bulk of the book. Um, but for Tony, this isn't really a journey of making money. He's really interested in having fun with his friends, uh, building a really neat, exciting company, uh, and the money is sort of a byproduct of all of that. Yeah, and this is the area I think the philosophy that Tony shares and his actions are kind of in direct conflict because early on, he actually discovers Zappos through Venture Frogs, which is his venture capital fund, and he was funding them on four-month cycles. So every four months, the founders of Zappos would have to come in and justify their existence to Tony, and then eventually he decided that this was a worthwhile venture that he would actually throw his own time and resources behind. And so I think for that reason, you can say, well, it doesn't exactly seem to sync up with the philosophy he's shared so far. Yeah, it wasn't really fun and games for them as they were wondering if their company was going to survive every week. But Tony does spend a lot of time talking about the values of Zappos, and it is something that he really does seem to believe in. But when you look at the values, you see things like do more with less or pursue growth and learning. And you can't help but think that these are sort of generic values that would apply to literally every company that's ever been created. Um, and you sort of wonder, you know, are there any trade-offs involved with these values? You know, could a company conceivably argue that you should do, you know, less with more? Um, and at least to me, it, it seems like there's no way to really argue against them, which, which sort of limits their value to me. Yeah, you know, I'm a huge fan of companies having core values, but in Zappos' case, I think they're pretty useless. I think the two things that really contribute to Zappos' early success is the move towards a strong logistical network. They move everything in-house and decide they're going to own the logistics from you know, point A to point B. And two, they move away from this dropship model. So early on, Zappos was actually delivering most of their shoes dropship from the supplier direct, and they say, no, we actually have to own the inventory, and by doing that, we can provide a better experience. So I certainly agree with you that building a big logistics network and handling inventory yourself is kind of a must for any modern e-commerce company. If you're looking for things that Zappos did as a result of their core values that they might not otherwise have done, I think their commitment to customer service really comes to mind. So Tony, for example, mentions again and again how it was a big decision to keep their call centers in the US versus outsourcing them. Zappos does things like having new hires work two weeks on the phones to develop a really close connection to customers. Um, it does seem to be a big part of their business plan. On the other hand, I think you look at Zappos and say they're selling shoes on the internet. You know, shoes are something where there's a lot of back and forth, people want to try them on, and this business couldn't possibly be successful unless they had great customer service. And so in that regard, it's kind of a logical thing to do, you know, values or no values. You know, Adam, I'm going to disagree with you here. I think this was a really unique thing that Zappos did that differentiated them from competition and allowed them to survive. All of the competition at the time was using the internet to drive prices down. All of the other shoe sites at the time were trying to drive prices down. And even if you look at something like Amazon locating in states where they didn't have to pay sales taxes, they were trying to drive prices down. This was the reason you bought something on the internet. And Zappos kind of flipped that on its head and said, look, you'll still pay full price, but you'll get better service than you can get at a physical store. That kind of changed the landscape a bit, and I think really allowed them to succeed. Yeah, it's true that I might not be sort of old enough to remember these very early days of the internet like you do. I think that's a good point. You kind of mentioned Amazon, and as I'm reading this book, if you know about the history of Zappos, you know that they were actually acquired by Amazon. I am waiting for this Amazon sale to come up. Early in the book, they mentioned wanting to out Amazon Amazon. They mentioned wanting to be the Amazon of shoes, and, and you want to get to a sale to kind of hear Tony's reaction to it. And when you get there, he's very, very positive about it. He basically says it's a win-win for both sides. You're kind of combining Amazon's amazing logistics with Zappos' sort of commitment to great customer service, and, you know, the call centers and whatnot. And Tony's pretty smart in that he doesn't agree to a cash sale um, like Amazon normally wanted to do when they acquired companies. Instead, Tony got them to do a stock transfer whereby Zappos stock was converted into Amazon stock 
And if you know again about the history of Amazon stock price, you'll know that that deal worked out quite well for all involved. Mm -hmm. I think, though, when we get to the book, we should be very fair to our, our listeners and let you know this is not a technical book. Um, this is a book that Tony is very upfront with. He did not use a ghostwriter, something I was initially applauding him for. And then towards the middle of the book, I'm like, he really should have used a ghostwriter. Like, this book uh, has a lot of really interesting stories, but Tony doesn't think they're interesting. He doesn't call them out. He sort of glances over huge events. For example, um, he talks about going to Harvard as, well, like, I didn't know where I wanted to go to school, so I went to Harvard. Um, he doesn't point out that that was perhaps unusual, and anybody who goes to Harvard had to work really hard to get there, regardless of your background. So I thought that made it a bit of an odd read, and not something I, I was too terribly fond of. Yeah, the book is a bit of a throwback in some respects. Um, Tony has an essay where he mentions how going on Twitter can make you kind of a happier and better person, uh, which doesn't seem like it really holds up today. Um, he also quits his job from Oracle very early on in the book, uh, and basically lives with a friend in Palo Alto where they're kind of messing around trying to figure out what company they want to build and eventually they stumble onto Link Exchange. But it's sort of a throwback in that, you know, with today's uh, housing crisis around here, it's somewhat unlikely that you could just quit your job and just sort of hang out looking for a, for a new business idea. And it does make you wonder if, you know, startup culture will kind of continue to flourish uh, just based on how expensive it is now. Yeah, absolutely. It's no doubt this story uh, did not make it into the Bradstone canon, mm -hmm. but regardless, thank you for listening. This is Random Talkers.